Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be revisiting the Apple TV first generation. Now I know most of you are probably going, wait a second Michael, revisiting? What are you talking about? When did you do a video on this? Well it was a few years ago so it's definitely been a while and I'm guessing most of you probably never saw that video. So it's here if you want to go check it out but it was basically just a little overview of the Apple TV first gen and ever since then one of the things I've been wanting to do with this thing is install Mac Mac OS 10 on it because one of the cool things about the first gen Apple TVs compared to all of the later models is these things are x86 based which means that you can run a standard desktop copy of Mac OS 10 which of course Mac OS 10 or Mac OS runs on ARM now with Apple making their own silicon and all that I'm sure you guys have heard about that by now but of course that wasn't the case when the Apple TV first gen was released and in fact with this being an x86 based device it runs runs a copy of Mac OS 10, I believe 10.4 Tiger, just modified of course with the Apple TV interface. But in today's episode, we're going to be installing full-fledged Mac OS 10 Leopard on this thing. Before we get to that, we're going to open this thing up and uh, take a look at the device very briefly. I mean, there's not really that much to talk about because it's an Apple TV. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen these things before. Of course, the first gen Apple TVs are much larger than every other model that came after it. And it's actually around the same size as a Mac Mini, just not as thick. I think it's actually a little bit bigger uh, lengthwise than a Mac Mini. But yeah, so here it is. It's the Apple TV. You got your Apple logo on the bottom. You got all your ports on the back. And unfortunately, we're missing <laughs> the remote. Uh, so we only have the uh, documentation here, our setup guide our Apple TV important product information guide, and our piece of paper, our envelope thing that held those two sheets of paper. No Apple stickers, unfortunately. Those are gone. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything in the package. Of course, none of this matters to us because we're not going to be doing what you're supposed to do with this thing anyways. But luckily, the installation process is extremely straightforward. Just like checking out today's video sponsor, Linode, who I'll be talking more about later on in this video. But yeah, it used to be a little bit more challenging, but nowadays you can find pre-made hard drive images that are designed to be run on the Apple TV first gen. And you can either write those to a USB flash drive or take out the internal hard drive that's in this thing and write the image to that. And that's the route we're going to be going in this video. And we're going to get started by just taking apart the Apple TV first gen which is something that I've never done before. So let's see what shenanigans we get ourselves into here. Uh, we're going to be using my wonderful iFixit toolkit here, which is like as large as the Apple TV. Just thought I should point that out because I found that kind of funny. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the thing about these Apple TVs, the bottom here, this layer of, you know, rubber essentially is, is like glued on. There's a bit of adhesive. So we kind of got to pry at that to uh you know get it to to reveal the screws underneath so i'm going to grab a prying tool here and we're just going to just go in here and very gently just pry that up and we're going to try not to actually break the the material because that can be relatively easy to do from what i've seen in fact, getting a, like a blow dryer or something would probably be ideal. There we go. It's coming slowly but surely. Uh, well, you can't actually see that. Let me make sure I get the thing in frame here. So there it is. We're just going to slowly peel that back to reveal our screw there. And we'll just take out the screw. Of course, with this being Apple, it is a Torx uh, screw or pencil lobe screw of some kind. Let me try this one. Nope, that's way too large. Okay. That's it. All right. So we'll pop that in and we'll remove this. And there we go. I think I might just go this this corner method for each of these because as far as I know, the screws are just in the corner. Oh, okay. Noticeably, that screw is a little bit larger than the other one. So I'm going to have to make a note of that. Let me just make sure I put these uh, so that's going to be the bottom or the yeah the bottom left one I assume the, the two bottom ones are going to be the smaller screws now the hard drive from what I understand is on 
the top, although I don't see, okay, it, it's right here. It's on this piece and you've got this IDE cable. Uh, yes, this is an IDE hard drive in here. Um, that just kind of like, you know, is sandwiched in between the two pieces. So we're going to just unplug that from the motherboard here so that we can fully separate the, the two pieces. So everything in here, we don't gotta mess with. We can just set it aside and all we're interested in is the hard drive right here. Well, I was thinking we could just leave the drive in here, but we're gonna have to definitely get it out so that I can attach my adapter here to it. And to do that, we have to peel back more of the, um, you know, rubber piece layer here uh, because the screws for the hard drive are right underneath. You see there's one right there. So let's just see if we can slowly but surely peel this back. I want to be very careful not to rip this. And of course, Apple has to change the screw type. Yay, there we go. That was relatively painless. So it looks like we've got, let's just take off this cable here. So we've got a, let's see how large this hard drive is, a 40 gig Fujitsu, of course, an Apple branded drive because, you know, Apple. And yeah, you know, it's your standard 2.5 inch laptop style IDE hard drive. So we're going to grab our adapter here and we're going to just connect that up. We're all set. So let me swap over to my MacBook here, plug this drive in and we'll copy that image over. All right, so we're here on my mid-2009 MacBook Pro, and I, before we go any further, want to give a huge thank you to SCJ312 over on the Tinker Different Forms for putting this write-up together. This is pretty much just it is a nice guide that you can follow along with it. It just really compiles everything, makes it uh, super easy for you to do. And as they say, this is not just the work of one person. This, you know, getting OS X to run on the Apple TV, of course, like desktop OS 10, not the modified version that it runs by default. You know, this has been something that numerous people over the years have been working on. It's not just one person. So they say right here, they can't take all the credit for this. Uh, but this write-up is definitely extremely useful. And yeah, uh, so I've got the Mac OS 10.5.8 image right here. This is the recommended one to use. If we go over here to Macintosh Garden where this has been mirrored, um, it talks a little bit about the four images. I believe there's actually more than four on the Internet Archive anyway. I think there are, yeah, there's six of them over here. Macintosh Garden apparently only has uh, four of them. They do mention here that this version two of the 10.5.8 image, they have made some modifications to it to really free up the RAM pretty much. They've disabled Spotlight, software update, and iOS syncing. So things you don't really need. And yeah, so we're going to go, uh, I've got disk utility opened up here. If I haven't mentioned it already, we've got the drive plugged in. So there it is. And we're going to go up here to erase and we're going to name this Apple TV HD. And we want to make it OS 10 extended journal and GUID partition maps are the default options there. We're going to erase it. And there we go. And then all we have to do is go to edit restore and we'll select select image and we'll select our DMG file on the desktop there. We'll select open and hit restore. And that should be all there is to it. All right, we're done. Uh, oh, no, we're not. It failed. What? <laughs> Could not restore. What the heck happened? Why did it fail? That's like it went through the whole thing, but it, it looks like it's on here. I mean, Apple TV HD, there it is. Let me try to unplug it here and plug it back in. Yeah, it shows it. Here it is right here. And there's the folders. So, I mean, I think it restored successfully. I don't know. I mean, well, one thing we can do, why don't we just mount this image here and compare them. I feel like there's supposed to be more files on the root of the drive. Maybe we just can't see them. Let me see if I remember the terminal command to show all files. I believe, okay, I believe it's defaults, right, com.apple, if I can, <laughs> apple, spell right, dot finder, and then it's show all, oh my gosh, 
show all files true. I think that's it. You know what? Let me just look it up. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Well, it just successfully mounted and the image has those same four folders. So it's looking good, but I, I, I want to show hidden files, Mac OS terminal command. Oh my gosh. Can I freaking spell correctly? I almost got it. Default's right. Com.apple.finder. Apple show all files true. Okay. Apple's really got to put their logo on everything, don't they? Okay. And then we got to do kill all, find, kill all. all finder. What is up with this keyboard, man? I'm going to blame it on the keyboard. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, there we go. So you see, we got a bunch of files here. And yeah, they're all on Apple TV HD. We got the mock kernel, var, USR, all the other folders. So I'm thinking it worked. For some reason, it just said it didn't restore properly. Let's just go ahead and unmount this, put it back in the Apple TV, and we'll see if it actually successfully worked. All right, we can unplug this, unplug this. Let's just close up the MacBook here. All right, and then we just need to line up our drive with the holes here. All right, so we just gotta screw these in. We'll start with this one here. Hooray, we got the drive mounted back in. So let me grab our, oh no, should I have done this before? Yep, I got a little ahead of myself there. This has to be plugged in first because of, of this standoff here. I can't get it in. So we got to take it back off of here. All right, let's try this again. So this comes off of here and then we take our IDE cable and we plug it into here first. There we go. All right, that's better. So now let me grab the other end here and we're just gonna plug this end right into the motherboard or the logic board, whatever you would like to say. And we can close it up. Now I'm not going to put the bottom screws on just yet because I do wanna hook this thing up to my monitor here and see if it actually works so let me just get that hooked up all right so we've got our lovely apple tv here with our keyboard and then i got the mouse plugged into the keyboard the hdmi cable and we're about to plug our power cable in and let's see what happens one thing i was wondering about this is if you needed the remote to fully power it on which I don't have. But no, it looks like it's getting a signal. I don't have, oh, there we go. Whoa, look at that. Oh my gosh, it's actually working. Now I would suspect this thing to take a little while to start up here. I'm definitely curious to see what it identifies itself as in about this Mac. But I believe we should just go through the Mac OS X Leopard introduction video, you know? with the wonderful music that, well, I don't even have audio working on this because uh, this is an HDMI to DVI cable. So yeah, there's no audio, unfortunately. Uh, but even if there was, I can't play the song because of the music mafia. So I, I could just dub my awesome cover that I did in my in my uh, Idena uh, Hackintosh video. It looks like we lost signal for a second there, but let's see, I, I think it should go through the out-of-box experience basically you know that initial setup process so let's see or maybe it's just going to restart <laughs> okay i mean we're definitely off to a great start because it is booting up we got the apple logo all right the spinning wheel stopped don't tell me it's going to restart again oh there we go all right all right we got a cursor oh boy look at that let's go we get in the intro video we're getting the intro video baby let's go Woo! okay so this is uh this is outstanding man this is awesome i know it's just running os 10 on apple tv like big deal but i mean come on you got to admit it's a little bit awesome because uh, I, I, I'd always wanted to do this. This is one of those projects that I just, for some reason, never got to. I don't really know why, because I've had this thing for years now. I just never, like, sat down to do it. It's been on my ideas list for a while. And our name is going to be Apple TV, baby. Woo! Okay. Yeah, that's a good short name there. Password, we're not going to bother. I definitely want to go into about this Mac. That's like the first thing I want to do. So processor, one gigahertz unknown. Memory, 256 megabyte, 400 megahertz DDR2 SD RAM. Okay. Let's go to more info and see what 
it's identifying itself as, what the model ID is. Apple TV 1 comma 1, okay, so it shows up properly there. Processor name, genuine Intel processor, it doesn't even uh, know what, what specific model that it is. One gigahertz, one core, two megabytes of L2 cache. Wow, I I was not expecting, I mean, I of course, theoretically, this seemed extremely simple, but I thought we would run into some sort of problem, like, holy crap, I mean, I'm just so used to running into issues on this channel, I'm sure you guys are too, I mean, it seems like there's, I don't know, some curse or something out there that just prevents me from doing really simple, uh, theoretically simple things, but in this case, everything worked uh, really well to where I'm like, what am I gonna do now? I mean, I guess we could explore Mac OS X Leopard a little bit here. Uh, we got Safari, we got Dashboard, we got Mail, we got all the things that you have in Mac OS 10.5. Uh, yeah, let's maybe customize it a little bit. Let's go to System Preferences and, oh yeah, this version of Safari is definitely not gonna be able to really load any modern websites. I mean, well, let's see if it loads apple.com. Oh, well, we've got the menu bar there. I mean, it is displaying, just not, you know, not super well. Oh yeah, look at that lag, whoo! Okay, so yeah, it's, <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is not liking me being on this page. I mean, it, it honestly, it did better than I thought. I wasn't even really sure if it was going to load, like, anything at all on the page, but it did. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to Wikipedia. Uh, okay, maybe not. YouTube, please update your browser, of course. I guess we can just go to the old net. I mean, that, it's literally what we always do in these videos. Of course, this is a little bit too new for the old net, but you want to go to apple.com in 1996? I remember this was one of the first sites that I went to when I discovered the Wayback Machine. I thought it was like the coolest thing. I was like, oh my gosh, this was the website in 1996. Like, holy crap. Yeah, so, you know, it's Safari. I mean, you guys have, <laughs> you guys have seen Safari before, I'm sure. And, oh, they've got interesting menu meters. This is a, a third party tool, I think. Yeah. So they've, they, they've got this bundled on here, that's nice. So we can turn that on to display CPU in the menu bar here. So yeah, let's do graph and percentage, uh, display disk activity, display memory meter, usage chart. Yeah, we can turn all this stuff on. That's actually neat, I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, you can have all that up here in your menu bar, which is definitely useful. And I guess we can maybe change the desktop wallpaper a little bit. Why not? We could uh, set this back to like the tiger style wallpaper here, which is probably more fitting for the Apple TV here. And eh, why don't we move the dock to the left side of the screen and maybe make it a little bit smaller and turn that magnification way up. So yeah, overall a really simple process. In fact, it's almost as simple as setting up a Linux virtual machine with today's video sponsor, Linode. That's because they offer affordable cloud hosting starting at just $5 per month that you can do practically anything with. If you've been looking to build your own website, set up a game server, or even your own cloud storage solution, Linode has you covered. The best part is you don't have to be an expert to set everything up thanks to their one-click app marketplace. Just scroll through a plethora of apps and game servers like Minecraft, Plex, and WordPress and select what you need. But that really only scratches the surface of what you can do with them. Because if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. And as a thank you for sitting through this ad, they're giving everybody watching a free 60-day $100 credit that you can spend on any of their cloud computing services, just as long as you sign up for a new account through my link in the video description. It's a great way to get started with with cloud hosting and I really appreciate their continued support of the channel. So be sure to check them out and huge thanks again to Linode for making today's episode possible. Well, there you have it guys. That is installing macOS 10.5 on the Apple TV first generation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I wanna thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.